hello, and welcome to another edition of the Bibliophiles. Today, I have, I'm going to be talking about, uh, for the first time ever, a book that a viewer suggested. <coughs> um, of course, Hell Hole by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. And my opinion is basically, meh. Was it, I don't really much care for it. <clears throat> Why? Well, um, first, some of the characters are kind of, they're just bland, and they're, they weren't interesting, and they weren't really that likable either. I guess I should start with, um, <clears throat> you know, everything's all very black and white. There's no, like, shades of gray or anything. Either you're a good guy, or you're a bad person who's a member of the constellation government <clears throat> and um, then there's like if you're talking if you want like an example like first there's um, General Adolphus who's supposed to be the good guy who's leading this rebellion against the corrupt government <clears throat> but like like at the beginning he's um, you know he's about to like he's very close to winning and then they come up saying like we have a bunch of uh, the civilians on board these ships and we have human shields and and you know several of the crew's uh, family members are here and he's all like no we we can't just stop just just because um, just because of this we have to keep on going forward and <clears throat> taking down this government and then they're like. Oh, well, uh, we have your mom aboard you, too. And it's like, whoa, 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 hey. Okay, sacrificing the families of the, the these men, yeah, that's okay, but sacri I never said anything about, about sacrificing any of my family members. <clears throat> and he just surrenders over. And um, <clears throat> uh, for some reason, they decide to just let him live, even though they near he nearly toppled their entire corrupt government because there's something about wanting a not wanting to have a martyr or something <clears throat> and they just put make him the governor of um, the planet Hall home which was nicknamed hellhole <clears throat> and they shoehorn in this uh, Dante's Inferno type and not I mean not uh, like paradise lost type reference where he's like well, it's better to, you know, rule in hellhole on uh, in this hellhole of a planet than to serve in the paradise type constellation government or whatever. <laughs> it's like just so obvious. And then there's the um, some characters that I would kind of accidentally not really mistake for other characters because they're just so similar. Like there are two. There's one female character that's that went to the planet to get away from this like psycho ex-boyfriend then there's another female character who's like um, who went to the planet because he wanted to he wanted to uh, you know like keep her son away from her husband and uh, like most time I'd be kind of me, me going like wait which ones which you know then there's um, also like there's aside from like the initial defeat, there's so many like convenient things that just happen in this happen in the General Adolphus's favor. Like, oh well, he's being banished to this horrible, almost unlivable planet. Oh, he has a secret benefactor helping him out. Oh, he's um, discovered this lost ancient alien race that was there before. And was like, oh, well, they're here to help him, and they're here to help, you know, you know, just just help him for no reason, just to, um, in exchange for, like, letting people, I, I don't know, it's something concerning some weird silvery pools, and, like, they go into them, and then they suddenly get, come out with, like, the consciousness of some random alien or I, or I don't know him. Then there's um, 
Well, like, then there's this, uh, like, how they, like, there's faster than light travel, but then they decided to stop using that in exchange for this new, more efficient way of, like, traveling, which is something about, like, subspace quantum marker things or something. I don't know. Um, like, wh why would you abandon perfectly good... <clears throat> You know, regular FTL travel just for a, a super FTL travel. Yeah, I like it. It like at least keep the old FTL ships for like a backup or something. But no, they just decide, nah, we don't need any type of backup or something in case of this system fails. You know, because even though that, because even then they're actually point out that the something some sort of uh, mineral that they use for this quantum network thing is running low but they they still don't act like they don't care then there's um there's some kind of moments that I thought probably weren't supposed to be funny but I thought kind of thought they were and like um I guess the there's a uh, uh, there's just like this moment with like the empress's daughter who's like having some sort of affair and she accidentally gets the person the other guy killed not the husband the other guy right? and, uh, and she tries to like reconcile it with their son with the guy the dead guy's son and he's all angry and i'm just like what you expect <clears throat> you know. see what if, what if um Hmm. Well, anyway, oh yeah, well, but my final rating would be two out of five. Like, it wasn't that bad, but it, like there was some. It kept me amused and kind of entertained throughout the whole. <laughs> the whole um, five hundred something pages. <laughs> yeah. <clears throat> You know, so that it's okay, yeah, but um, yeah, like the sequel isn't going to be coming around until 2013, so it's going to be a long wait. And if I remember so, then I might look at the other one. But I'm in no rush, which is I kind of feel this is a shame because I, I would like to see these two working on something that isn't. It's nice seeing these two working on something that isn't Dune related for once, although, <clears throat> though, don't get me wrong, I love the Dune series, and I think the latest trilogy they're working on is pretty necessary, especially to, you know, solve some of the plot questions, <clears throat> mainly the, such as, mainly how Erasmus gets into, back into contact with Omnius and builds his second machine empire, but, you know, that's another time. So, like, I'm certainly, but still, like, I'm not really going to be holding my breath waiting for the sequel to this. And, um, yeah. Anyway, um, till next time, I'm your host, signing off. See ya.